Well, AT&T is rolling out a new internet service for $70 a month. But if you want privacy, oh, guess what? That's going to cost you extra. The plan going to charge an additional $29 a month if you want to avoid being tracked, your online activity. Here now, Jared Levy from ProfitableTrading.com along with James Frischling from New Oak, Dan Schaefer uh, back as well. Jim, it's great to see you. I mean, you're, they're charging for privacy. Is this brilliant or stupid on AT&T's part? Jim? Oh, I, well, look, it's... Uh I don't like it, but I guess that what they're doing is they're trying to monetize something that uh, that, that most of the invest most uh, consumers don't know is already happening. There is a myth about, uh, in my opinion, about privacy uh, and 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 security on the or sorry, I should say privacy uh, and anonymity online. The fact is, at and is trying to monetize it. I think it's terrible, um, but but you know what? They're going to get away with this. Jared, thing. same question. It, I mean, what what are they doing? I mean, they're going to anger their especially their home customers, but it's it's phones as well. well it, it's a money grab, right? I mean, this is all spawned out of net neutrality. Basically, AT&T was like, oh, we were going to extort the content providers like, you know, Netflix and such. But since we can't do that, we can now go to you, the consumer. Oh, consumer, by the way, if you want to pay cheaper prices, we'll do that for you. But if you don't want to pay the cheap prices, we're going to go ahead and we're going to sell your information now back to Netflix, back to Facebook. It's just the way it is. But you can protect yourself. You know, use private browsers. Get smart about your privacy. But this is the way it's going. You're going to see this not just with AT&T, Time Warner. I'm sure it's going to echo uh, similar. Uh, well, in streaming topics. and entertainment, everything is changing every day, frankly. And I want to bring yeah. another story to your attention, too, because you have to make room for these ads when it comes to cable TV. And you probably didn't know this. Cable television channels are now speeding up sitcoms and movies in order to get more time for commercials. TBS recently used compression technology on The Wizard of Oz and reruns of Seinfeld. TV Land guilty doing the same to episodes of Friends. And this is according to a really interesting piece in the Wall Street Journal uh, this morning, Dan. But, you know, I wonder if it's it, obviously there's audience erosion that's happening here. Mm -hmm. But this is their solution to change the programming. And a lot of people in Hollywood are furious about this. You know, I got to tell you, and I got to admit this, this goes back to my radio days. This is not new. In New York City, a lot of radio stations sped up records by 2 to 3%. You, know, you can listen to them and say, gee, the song sounded better on that channel. I did this during the 1970s as a disc jockey on the Technique table, and they're doing it here. It actually, I, now I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist, but some people like a faster-paced world and this speeding up of some of this digital technology, people may actually like this in this fast world. Well, well, Jared, I have an idea here for this one because one of the, the co-creators of Friends spoke and said she's furious about what's happening. Like, they've squashed all the credits at the end of Friends. It just goes to the next, you know, show or whatever. My answer, yeah. take less money in your distribution deal. Yeah, I, I don't think... It, that was an interesting take. I actually think this is going to propel... Or, or exacerbate people going away from those traditional networks and going to more of those Netflix platforms. I think music is a little bit different than watching TV. And, and again, it's really just the idea of it, right? Um, as people learn about this, I think it's going to upset them. And I think, again, it, it, it's going to drive more stuff away, more content away and dollars away from, from those companies and more towards the Netflixes and Amazons of the world. Well, I want to stay on the Hollywood theme here for just a second. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but Richard Dreyfus as Bernie Madoff. The Oscar winner is going to star as the disgraced stockbroker in an upcoming miniseries uh, for ABC. Jim, this must, I mean, Richard Dreyfus. I'm not sure. Is that right? Is that good casting? I'm not so sure. I mean, he's an Oscar winner, I believe. And and look, I'm, I want, I'm waiting for the day when we actually show the Madoff scandal uh, enough respect by changing and retiring Ponzi scheme and actually calling it the Madoff because the size of Madoff was just so much larger. So uh, Oscar winner taking the role. I think we're getting closer to the renaming of a Ponzi scheme. You know, Jared, yeah, biggest financial <laughs> fraud in U.S. history. And But one of the things they're going to do, they're saying, is they're actually going to go back in time and show how he got to that point, which we don't really talk about that much. No, I think that'll be fascinating to see. And, and, and by the way, Richard Dreyfuss, in my mind, I'm still thinking, like, what about Bob? Interesting point, too, Robert <laughs> De Niro. There's been talk about him also playing Madoff in a different role. But again, I think Dreyfuss will do a great job. I'm curious to see sort of both of them and, and what angles they do show uh, of Madoff and, and what we do, do learn from The history of how he ended up to be such a crook, frankly. Guys, thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs>